we also have Sam Heyman from Ofsted and obviously Leanne uh, Mella from MOJ and Leanne will be doing the presentation for us. Let me take that transcript off. There we go. So um, when you're ready. Shall I, shall I kick off Loretta? Yes, please. Perfect. Hello, everybody. Um, apologies, I haven't got my camera on. It's not out of choice. Um, when I turn it on, it, it's just sort of blank. So I'm not sure what's happening there, but um, I've got a short fringe and a big pair of glasses. Um, so you can just sort of imagine that sort of face talking to you for the next uh, few minutes. Um, so a little bit of an update of where this came from. So. I was recently invited to speak at the DWP Delivery Manager Conference. Um, so hopefully met uh, quite a few of you there. And while I was there at the end of the day, um, the um, learning and development team were talking about uh, various initiatives that they had within DWP that delivery managers could be part of. And they had a really successful mentoring scheme. And I sat there in the audience and thought, oh, I'd quite like a little bit of that as well. Um, so I got in touch with Loretta and, and Barry afterwards and said, could we um, perhaps look at doing something across um, across government, an opportunity for delivery managers to, to come together um, and learn from one another? Um, Barry was talking to Sam as well at the same time from Offset. So that's what brings us here today really uh, as the launch of a pilot scheme um, something that we think um, you'll hopefully really like and, and get a lot from so let me move this forward so I've got a few bits of information to run through with you just to give you a bit of an introduction to what a triad is and what some of the benefits of those uh, what we think the benefits are who it's for and, and how you join and then the majority of the session is going to be over to yourselves um, for Q&A so we can hopefully answer any questions that you might have. Um, so firstly, what is a triad? So we've defined it as a peer group of three people who are going to meet regularly. Um, so you'll be you'll be sharing maybe things that are currently going on for you that you might be finding challenging that you'd appreciate other people's inputs on. Um, you can use your own experiences and things that you've tried before to help other people in your in your triad group. You'll be able to ask questions or make suggestions for what you think um, might help people out. And really, it's just a, a support network. So you'll be able to use your different perspectives to to really um, have those in-depth conversations with people as peers. You'll all be within the delivery profession, but might have slightly different flavoured roles. We're going to be curating the group so that the triads have cross-gov representations. So you won't be in a triad with all people from your own group. There'll be a there'll be a variety of people in there. Um, you'll be at different stages of your career, and you're all going to give and receive support. So it's not a one-sided conversation. It's not formal mentoring or coaching. It really doesn't matter how long you've been within the delivery profession. You will be able to. Um, give and receive support in that. Um, so we think the main benefits are around seeing the bigger picture across government. So we're all a bit curious, I think, aren't we? It's it's nice to peep over the fence and, and see what people are doing over there, see where there are differences and also um, see where there are commonalities, where there are common things that we're tr both trying to solve. It'll help you build relationships and grow your network it will give you that time out of your day to day role as well to really reflect on on what you're doing, why you're doing it and be able to share those experiences for the benefit of others. Um, you'll be able to get multiple perspectives on maybe challenges you're seeking um, seeking support on. You'll hopefully be able to learn new skills. You might have your viewpoints challenged a little bit, which is always quite refreshing. I know you can find yourself in a um, maybe sort of leaning on um habits or things that you've tried and tested methods of doing things in the past and actually you might have somebody yeah. come in with some fresh ideas or a different way of looking at things and hopefully between the three of you you'll be able to create a really safe space where you can support one another so 
who's it for? It's for anyone who's currently a, a delivery professional. So any delivery flavoured job title, any level of seniority or grade, any number of years or days or weeks experience. And it's open to civil servants and contractors alike. And really it's for anyone who's curious about how other people or departments approach delivery or approach the craft of delivery. So um, Loretta will hopefully share a link in the chat box and we've already had, I think at the last count it was 56 people who'd signed up already, which is amazing. Um, but there's a really easy form for you to fill in, which will just capture your name, your organisation and your email address. You know, it's super quick to fill in. You'll be matched with two other people. You'll find a, a, a time that works for you all for your first meeting. It's open format session, so it, it's really up to you what you want to discuss and how you want to discuss it. But we think that a really nice way to get started might be to do a uh, manual of me type activity so you can understand a bit more about the people that you're in a, a triad with. You'll then be able to agree a time, day and, and frequency for future meetups. So we think that ideally these would happen every two to four weeks, maybe for 30 minutes. 45 minutes an hour you know it's sort of it's up to you um but trying to find that regular cadence uh once it's in your diary it means that it's more likely to happen then and we'll check in with you on regular intervals to see how you're getting on so i've put together a, a bit of a timeline here of um so if you fill in your form brett is going to be reviewing this regularly so Within about a week, you'll be matched with um, two other people. That'll just be through a, a simple email to make that introduction. It'll then be over to yourselves to find that time to, to meet. And like, I think it's nice to strike while the iron's hot. So maybe trying to get in your first meeting within the next week or so, appreciating that lots of leave is coming up, but wouldn't it be nice to meet before we all go on holiday? Um, then sort of finding that regular uh, pattern. So having your having your first meeting, getting to know each other a little bit and finding that regular, regular session, perhaps every two to four weeks. And basically you're off then. That's it. That's repeat, meet and repeat. Um, towards the end of January, we'll send out um, a bit of a brief survey just to try and understand um, whether you've met, how you're finding things. Um, whether it's been valuable, um, that kind of thing. And we'll use that information to tell us whether this pilot's going in the right direction, if there's anything we could do to make it more successful. And if it is successful, um, we're going to start opening it out to other government departments as well and see if we can make this a bit of a thing. Um, but it will be led by feedback from yourselves. And that's that's really it. Um, thank you. Um, so it's over to yourselves now if you have any Le um, Leanne, questions. Yes. The link that's been put into the chat, I've just tried to do that and it's coming back and asking for permissions to, to access it. Is there any chance we can actually download a copy of that onto the chat rather than have to go through that link? Just wow. generating loads of extra work for somebody else. We haven't had, I don't think we've had that um, no, before no, we tested it. We tested it out that oh, anybody on the internet should be able to access it, shouldn't need permissions. I just Chris? tried it and it's blown me out. Chris, it's Tony, it's just worked for me. Oh, well, see, you, you were special, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> there's it's two me out that have just come, there's two requests just come through and I've just approved them so you've got access. Brilliant. Thank you. OK, are there any any questions from from anybody? I've got a quick question, if you don't mind. Um, uh, I got the invitation. My name's uh, Andy Hobson. I work in DWP Digital, um, which is the data team. Um, so our, our, my particular role is fairly focused towards delivery. It's 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 a you know 
meeting people's needs and investigating their needs and delivery of their needs. And then um, <clears throat> one of my colleague also, he works within the within digital, but in the product design um, practice. But again, very delivery focused, making sure that you know what is going to be built and designed and it meets the needs and liaising with stakeholders, etc. So they are delivery focused. Do we sound like fits for this program? Definitely. Yeah. Do you do you feel like you'd benefit from speaking to other people in in the delivery profession? Uh, yeah, I, I I personally think it's quite it's quite useful. I, I'm old enough for truth to remember things like spring school and summer school, where people from across departments used to meet and discuss and um, build relationships, and always found it useful to see how the other half lived. Well, it's <laughs> it's for, it's for you then, Andrew. This is you know the, it's the perfect thing for you to join then. Thank you. I love the idea of seeing how the other half live. <laughs> um, there's um, a couple of people who've said they can't access the link, um, which is that is that is odd, isn't it? Because yeah, because we've had we have had uh, people from Ofsted already pre-registered, so to speak, uh, and nobody. We've not heard that they can't uh, join before. Uh, so and, and DWP. People mm. send, which is very odd because yeah. some DWP person can join, they can all join. Yeah. Same with the other department. As an alternative, if you can't click the link and it doesn't work, I can send out email, uh, a link by email if, if that's I was gonna, mm. I was going to say, do we just give your email address, Loretta? Yeah, just email. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'll put my email address uh, in the chat. And the three things that we needed to know, which I guess would we get just from an email or the name, the department, DVP, Ofsted or MOJ, and the email address. And yep. I guess we'd, we'd probably get those just from you emailing Loretta. So yep. I'd like to be yep. in the chat. Yeah. I can see a question in the chat from Russell, which says, would the aim be to mix up the groups after a period of time? Um, <laughs> A good question. We've been thinking about this. Um, so the triads themselves, that'll be fixed. You'll be part of that that triad, and that can go on for as long as you, as a group, want it to continue. You'll be matched. Um, so it might be might become a lifelong thing. I don't know. You might become godparents for each other's children, or um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know where we might even have some triad weddings or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll get my hat ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as this as this scheme goes forward, um, I think you know you you might decide that either the triad naturally gets to a point where you want to join. Um, you might want to sort of close that one out and join another one, or you might want to just be a part of different triads. So as we bring different other government departments in, um, you know, you might decide, oh, February, March time, I've been meeting with this group, things are going really well. Actually, I'd like to be part of a second second group and, and see what's going on at, at DFA, DFA, DFA and NHS and, and things like that. So there's there's not really a limit to um, being able to join different triads. It's up to you, but we won't be coming in and, and mixing people up themselves. So once you're in that group, it'll continue for as long as as long as you like. We've got a hand up. Thank um, you. I've been sat waiting patiently. Oh, sorry. Okay. How, how do you match people up? Because all you ask for is people's names, yeah, email address and departments. How do you know who's interested in what? So we're not ma we're not matching people. So with mentoring, you might want to be matched by a particular skill set that you were looking to develop in. So if you were looking to develop in, um, I don't know how you use metrics, you might be matched with a mentor who is really good at using metrics. Um, we're not doing that here. So we're purely matched people based on them having a, a common profession and you being in different government departments from each other and that's really the only criteria we didn't want to start matching people based on um sort of years or experience and and um, particular skills they wanted to develop because it's it's more of a an informal peer group okay it might be that 
you know, in, in the in when we do the review in January, so on the feedback form, if that is something that people wanted to develop um, and have more of a, a science to the matchings, you could pop that on the form. But uh, for the time being, we're we're purely matching it just on uh, you being three different delivery people. And as with all pilots, you know, we'll we'll look at that, like Leanne says, we'll look at that feedback you give us at the end of January. And if we have to change things around, we will do. Any more questions? I can see one in the chat from, from Nick. So would it be doable or feasible to match triads based on location in the country so we could have a real life meetup as well? Um, I think that's a great idea. Um, initially for this first for this first go, we're just doing the, um, the matching on, based on the departments, like I said. Um, but pop that in your feedback form in, in January and um, that might be something that we can bring in. We we're just doing a kind of MVP approach uh, for this one, but that's a nice idea. I quite like the idea of, uh, of of meeting up from other areas where you're not familiar with the area, because that that gives you that that extra edge. Then, but I'm I'm a little strange like that. Road road trips. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you're already in town. Uh, visiting um, one of our one of our own sites, there's no there's no hardship in uh, in meeting up with somebody else from another area. You know that mm -hmm. that's it's it's about spreading your wings and and talking across the the borders, so to speak. We can only do that if we if we're prepared to go into the lion's den. I love that. That yeah, I think. Um... You know, it's up to you if you want to do, want to organise road trips and things as a as a triad. And I can see in the um, in the comments as well, we've got um, McKinley saying, "Would an extension in the future swap jobs for a while to walk a mile or two in each other's shoes?" Um, again, I think that's I think that's a great mm -hmm. idea. So being able to sort of shadow each other, and there's absolutely nothing I don't think. <laughs> um, that would stop you from doing that if that's something that you wanted to do as a, a triad and you wanted to almost do a little bit of a, a shadowing of each other. I don't think there'd be any um, anything that would get in the way of that, is there? I don't, maybe Barry, Neil, Sam, jump in if I'm speaking out of turn here. I think we could be friendly. I think the, the biggest barrier is probably technology um, a lot of the time. But uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you are doing a bit of a physical meetup, why not? And certainly like us in DWP, as you can see, you're all on the DWP Teams call. I'm sure we could join an Ofsted call or a yeah. MOJ call. So in a sense, technology makes like meetings a little bit easier. So why not? We're all civil servants or contractors to the civil service. James just got his hand up. Be interesting to see when when you hang up the call whether this chat stays persistent because I've had mixed success with that. Hopefully it will. So. Yeah. Don't think it will do if you're not DWP. I think if you're external to the call, you won't be able to. Say, you'll be able to go back and see comments, but you won't be able to continue adding them. I think. I think Barry, I think that's based on the you know me having an engineering email mm -hmm. account rather than a, a straight D DWP one. So uh, yeah, I don't think we can continue to chat, unfortunately, James. What? Is Slack an option? Just thinking, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's worth just asking asking now if, you know, is everybody yeah, on the government's my next choice? Can, can I ask a quick question around that? So we, we're on a Teams chat here. Have we got a, a, a specific triad team site? Because if you've got the team site, then you can uh, you can copy the the conversation from this or the the trans uh, transcripts and the and the video. You can paste it into there, and that then becomes the uh, there for the for the um, well, I think it's up to ten years, depends upon the policy you've got in place for it. That that's probably the the, the better way to deal with it. But so new suggestion. Mm -hmm. mm, I, yeah. <laughs> I've never had the spaces or teams kind of thing. I don't know if it, once again, 
kind of works from a across domains kind of thing as well. Because I know I've had trouble getting onto DWP ones because I'm even on DWP, I'm an engineer in DWP, and it just yep. means I get slightly differently. So um, we could give it a try. I think that maybe maybe that's one of the things to think about. Is just give some try and. The beauty to that, you, you get different channels, so you can set the channels up in it. Yeah. You can get the you get the SharePoint site behind it, so you can put files and and other other pieces in there. But you can also use OneNote across the the, the stream as well, so you could use that to post questions in uh, in there. So you can effectively build up a, a frequently asked questions um, repository. Again, it, all I'm trying to do is use the technology we've got without causing yeah, yeah. any extras. I'm happy to. A lot of work. Yeah, if anyone wants to kind of set things up, I'm happy to try and access and confirm things from kind of my engineering side. And then, as, as as one one element of this, uh, of the of one side of the triad, it'll it'll be quite interesting because you, you're on a on an engineering account, but then you've got the the other domains then, so Ministry of Justice and uh, and Ofsted. And, and I don't know whether they would be set up for access to to that. And I, th I think that'll be the biggest hurdle, is getting that cross uh, cross government access for it. I I th I think certainly from a DWP perspective, we can't do cross domain teams sharing. We can't even talk to our MacBook users, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm pretty sure we can't do Teams. As as James has posted and I've posted, there is ukgovernmentdigital.slack.com. Um, so everyone, certainly in DWP, you can't access that from your DWP device, but you are allowed to access it from your personal device with your DWP email. And there is a delivery management channel in that. It's a hash delivery merged. It's a bit of a... Squeak. So we could all be on that. And uh, I'm James with his hand up, but I'm also going to say we've got the Delivercom website that we use for the cross gov delivery community and the um and the associated um YouTube channel, which maybe we'll put this video on there so that people outside DBP can see it. Can we can we not put this on YouTube then? <laughs> <laughs> So there's a few a few questions in the chat that I just want to I want to get to as well. Um, so somebody had asked around if a triad loses a member, would we add a new one or I think be, be matched with other ones? I think if that happens, if you just send Loretta a, a message, if you wanted to stay um, paired up, I'm sure Loretta would be able to just add one person to your existing. Yeah. Um, I don't know what would you be at that point a duad, um, and then you can become a triad again. Um, but I think part of the rationale of us creating triads is there might be times when even though you've scheduled your session ahead of time, one person might just not be able to, to make it. But hopefully you can still carry on with the conversation with, with two people and then the, the third person can can join at a, a future date as well. Um, let's see, is there anyone else? Who's a bit of, so I'm not very good at doing the, the chat. And the reading and the listening and the talking at the same time. <laughs> um, what happens next after this meeting, please, from James? So next steps are fill in the form. It sounds like people have been doing that anyway. And you will receive a message from Loretta. So you'll get an email which will have the three of um, the three of the members of the triad in that email. Um, and Loretta just making that introduction and then it's over to yourselves as a trio to find your first uh, kickoff day and away you go really there's nothing else there's nothing else involved in it and we'll be in touch um, end of January time uh, with a with a short survey to get your feedback get your ideas of what we could do to make it even better and um, see where we can take the pilot next I'll start putting those emails out uh, as early as next week. So give you a few days for people to fill fill in the form if they don't manage it today. I say put them emails out next week. Um, we've got a, a hand up. 
Um, I can't see the name fully. Is Sandy, that, is Sandy, name Hobson? Sandy Hobson. Um, quick question. Um, the USP of this seems to be the idea of the cross departmental, i.e. one person in the triad from three different departments. What are you going to do if you get a, an imbalance of people willing to participate? So, you know, uh, too many in one and not enough in another. Are you going to have people in multiple triads? Or are you going to just wait until you get enough people in to form a new triad? Uh, There's I think... Go on, Loretta. Come. I was going to say that might happen at the beginning. Obviously, it's new, and um, so we have discussed this. And at the beginning, it might be a, a a couple of people from the same department. But once we start getting more people, we can swap them round. I think that's what we decided, isn't it? Barry, yeah. Neil, Leanne, anybody? <laughs> I was going to say, we discussed that yesterday because the scale yeah. of the departments compared to, say, the Ofsted, for example, is a difference. There will be a, probably a high probability, but there won't be one person from Ofsted in every triad, for example. So we're going to aim to... We'll, we'll try and avoid putting three people from the same department in wherever possible. Um, it might not always be possible to put one person from each um, in. So you might end up with two MOJ and one DWP or two DWP and an Ofsted. But there will be there will be that cross government representation in there. It just might not be balanced across all departments just yet whilst we're at this pilot stage. But when it goes worldwide, we'll have more departments. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay. fetching the foreign office on board then. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you want to trip abroad. <laughs> well, I'm not going to knock it. <laughs> OK, we're at time. Uh, it looks like James has already set up a um, triad prototype channel for us on Slack, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but a recording of this will be available to people. We'll share the slides to folks afterwards. And um, looking forward to hearing all about how you get on in the in the coming weeks. I, I have one question before you go. And okay. That's around the timeline. So we're very fastly approaching the 16th of December. An awful lot of people disappear then for two weeks. How is that going to impact your uh, your timeline? Um, well, it's really your timeline. So Loretta will send out those emails next week, and it's up to you to decide when the when the the first date of you meeting might be. It might be that you do that in early January, or it might be that if some of you are around, you have it. You know, you're able to get it in the following day or the following week. Um, okay. But really, it's uh, it's your timeline, and it's when when it fits in with with you and your schedules. All I was asking about was the review period, because if you if you want to have a a couple of sessions before you have your review, your review is cutting it really tight. That's the only piece I was coming at. Yeah, I think it's just a light touch check in, really, just to say, just yeah. to check with people whether whether you have actually had your first meeting, how that went, if there's any support you need, any ideas that that came out of it um, and it will be on an ongoing basis those sort of review forms just checking in on a on a regular basis so we don't need people to have met a certain number of times before being able to feedback um, but we'll just have these regular touch points in with people to to see how to see how you're getting on brilliant thank you thanks okay um so if, if you do have any questions that come to you afterwards, um, there's the contact um, form, um, not contacts form, contacts page in the slides, which have email addresses of people you can get in touch with within each area. Um, but thank you, everybody, for coming along and for your engagement and questions. Um, looking forward to kicking it off. Thanks, everybody. Thanks thank, you. thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.